On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus passed through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 people with leprosy approached him. But keeping their distance, they shouted out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them who saw that he was healed, turned back and praising God with a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and he thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. But Jesus said, weren't there 10 people made clean? The other nine, where are they? Was there not one to be found who could come back and praise God except this foreigner? Then he said, get up, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. As we talk about gratitude this season, I'd like to share with you a prayer called the Five Finger Prayer. And maybe you know it, but I love it because it's a really great way that I can remember the people I need to pray for. You might, when you do your Five Finger Prayer, um, remember each person in prayer that you're thinking about and ask God to help them in some way. But today, as we remember people, we're going to give thanks for them and you'll have your own ideas of who you're thankful for and why you are thankful. But here's how the prayer goes. So you have five fingers, and if you hold your hand like this, your thumb, which is closest to you, will remind you of the people you are closest to. So that's usually the people you live with. So the grown-ups, a parent, uh, maybe grandparents, a close friend. So. So think about who those people are closest to you and thank God for, for those people. Why are you thankful for those people? The next finger is your pointer finger. So think about the people who give us direction. So for us, that might be our teachers. They guide us and give us direction. It might be our ministers. It might be someone who teaches you something, maybe a coach or a piano teacher or someone who teaches you something you love to do. So think about those people who give you direction and give thanks for them. Why are you thankful for those people? Thirdly, our tallest finger is our middle finger. So in this case, we think about leaders. Leaders who lead us, maybe in our city, like our mayor, or people we elect, like in our province or our country. Who leads us? And then think about why we might be thankful for them. Our fourth finger, our ring finger, is actually the weakest finger on our hand. It has the least amount of strength. So we think about the people who, who maybe are the people who need the most help right now. People who are, need the most. And I can think of lots of prayers I can offer to God about what those people need. But when I think about those people, I can also probably be thankful for them, for the lesson, lessons they teach me or the ways they inspire me or how they see hope in their lives. But maybe you can think about those people who we consider the weakest and how we might be thankful for them. And then lastly, our baby finger, the littlest finger. Sometimes we think pretty little of ourselves but we also have to pray for ourselves. So this smallest finger is for us. It's for ourselves. So I want you to think about what is it that you're thankful for most about you? What gifts do you have? What skills do you bring? How do you help others? What is it that you just want to celebrate and thank God for and, and be grateful for? So that's our five finger prayer. So giving thanks for the people closest to us, the people who give us direction, the people who lead, the people who are the weakest, and for ourselves. We give thanks for all of these people, and we lift our prayers to God, 
and we say, Amen. Hello, my name is Sherry and I have a special story to share with you today. This is a story that appears in only one gospel, the Gospel of Luke. This is a parable. A parable is like a gift, a gift that was given to us just for us before we were even born. Sometimes we're not always ready to hear parables when they come to us. They can be hard to open. Sometimes we need to make sure we are ready for the story. This gold and sparkly box contains everything that we need to tell this story today. I wonder if you're ready. Let's open it together. Hmm. There was once a man who did amazing things and said amazing things. And people would ask him, who are you? And he would say, I am the light of the world. Today's story comes from a special book, the Bible, and we know it will tell us something about God's love. Lepers are people who had a terrible skin disease. Because of their terrible skin disease, they also had a terrible life. Leprosy is a disease where people are not allowed, were not allowed to live in towns and villages because people were afraid of catching their disease. If anyone came near a leper, the leper had to warn the people to go away. No one was allowed to touch a leper. One day, 10 lepers called out to Jesus. They asked him for help. Jesus saw them and he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. Now the priests were the people who had to say whether or not they were really healed. Hmm. On the way to the priests, the people noticed that Jesus had healed them. They were all better. And they were allowed to be with people again. One of the lepers, a foreigner from Samaria, came back to Jesus and he said, Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus was surprised. Even though all ten had been cured, only one came back to say thank you. I wonder what it would have been like to be a leper and never be allowed to be near or to see other people. I wonder why people were afraid of going near the lepers. I wonder how the lepers felt when they were healed. I wonder what you would have said to Jesus. Thanks be to God for today's story.
That was a great story, wasn't it? And it's important. It's a very important story because it's important to say thank you for the people that do things for us. When people are nice to us or kind to us, or when people do something that we don't expect that is very nice, it's important to say thank you. So today for our craft, we're gonna make a thank you card. And for this craft, you're gonna need some basic supplies. You're gonna need paper, and it can be white or colored paper. I prefer colored paper, um, and my favorite color is blue, so I'm gonna use the blue paper. But you can use any colored paper, or you can even use white paper. Another thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need some markers to mark your, and write on your thank you card, and to uh, make sure that all the details are there that you want. And then you could also, if you have some stickers at home, you could use some stickers. Or if you want to cut out some of your own shapes, you can use some glue and some scissors and cut it out with the extra paper and decorate your card that way. So I'll let you go get your supplies and I'll meet you over at the craft table. Well, welcome to the craft table. As I mentioned, we're making thank you cards today and you're gonna need paper and markers like I said and you could use some stickers if you have them uh, or if you want to use uh, some other paper and cut out some shapes with glue or with scissors rather you can do that uh, and then you can glue them on to your card as well now I didn't mention but if you don't want to use markers you can always use crayons and we got the big Crayola box here uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and use markers and so as we go I mentioned that my favorite color is blue so I'm going to use the the blue piece of paper now you have the option uh, with a card of folding it in two like this and that's a big card and so you can have a big card and you can put lots of shapes and writing on it and open it up and you have lots of room so that's one option you can do the big card option or the second option you can do a smaller card and that's uh, folding your paper into four so you fold it in half and then you fold it again in half like this and you see how that's a lot um, smaller so you're not going to be able to get as much on as you would be the big card but sometimes a small card is good and then sometimes a big card is good I'm gonna go with the small card today and so on the small card on the front you can just write uh, I like to use big letters for this thank you and I'm gonna underline it in red because that's a very exciting color isn't it and I'm gonna put a big exclamation mark there so I, thank you maybe your printing is a little better than mine and I'm gonna put this to um, Essie because Essie works in our office and Essie is always so kind to me that I wanna make sure that she knows how much I appreciate how kind she is and how much she helps me. And I got my blue marker here. Now you're gonna say maybe you can't see blue and blue but with this blue it's a different shade so you can see it. So thank you Essie. And I'll put an exclamation mark there. I'm going to go with my red again just to underline it and bring some attention to the fact. And I'm going to tell her that you are the best. I'm going to put that in capitals. Now, I have some stickers. I like stickers, so I'm gonna put some stickers on there. Uh, I'm gonna put a little um, sticker here on the front. And we'll grab that. There we go. And I'm gonna put a sticker inside here that Essie can look at as well to let her know how much that we appreciate her and how great she is. So there's my finished card. Thank you. It doesn't have to be very uh, complicated. It can be very simple like mine. Thank you, Essie. You're the best. And that is our craft. Well, that was a fun lesson today, wasn't it? It's important to learn about thankfulness and to say thank you to those who do kind things to us and for us. And I hope you have somebody special that you can give your card to. I want to say thank you to somebody special as well. It's you. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for being in Sunday School. I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you soon. God bless. Bye.